So the first circuit that we'll look at using character, I'll just say, never mind, I'm just not going to say the name. Kirchhoff, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, rules is, um, so registers in series. This is actually the easier one. Um, it kind of looks like this. Um, so I can have a battery here. I'm trying to draw, the, draw it small so that I can use the rest of the space. Battery here, register here, another register right after that and then comes back to the battery. So this is a circuit. There's a path for current to flow. There's a you know, path for current to flow like this. And let's say that um, this battery has some voltage V0, and the resistances of these registers are some values R1 and R2. Um, and here's a question that someone could ask. The question that, um, it's a term that you will see in your textbook also. There's a phrase, equivalent resistance. Or um, if you are looking at really fancy textbook, I don't think that one's ours. Um, they might even say thevenin, uh, thevenin equivalent to uh, resistance. Um, which is, there's some theorem proven by the guy named thevenin who proved that um, something. But you know, it comes down to what does the phrase equivalent to resistance of these two registers. What does, any ideas what, might, what that might refer to? Like equivalent in what sense? Because, you know, I, if I have two registers, it's, how, many, how much resistance there is um, in the way they are arranged in the circuit. So he, this is a, it's a black box view that I want you to think about. So imagine that these two registers are put inside the box. So they are like literally inside the box, black box, and you have no way of looking directly inside the box. All you can do is you might be able to apply voltage, and you might be able to measure the current that's going in. So if you have this, uh, if you have this black box imagined, then this is the quote unquote equivalent to circuit, you can imagine a uh, building. As in, you have a battery here, and inside this black box, instead of imagining some complicated arrangement to, with the two registers, you imagine that maybe it's a, just a single register that's in there, that it's only one register in there, and what you see outside with the same voltage that somehow produces the same amount of current, it will be consistent with the resistance of this register here being what's, what we are going to call equivalent resistance. So that's the sense in which um, this is the equivalent resistance. Does that make sense? Yes? No? I feel like I'm going through a long way to explain something that's simple. That is actually simple. In fact, here, you know, if I asked you what is the equivalent resistance, what would you have said? Any guesses for the formula? R1 plus R2. You just added them, right? And that actually turns out to be the correct answer. So when it's in series, it's actually pretty simple. And, but you know, we'll go through this rule to prove that that's the case. Um, oh, one more um, preliminary matter to take care of before we actually do that. Um, so here, if what I said was true, then I should be able to figure out, know, you know, I'm going to figure out what the current is. From knowing the current, I should be able to figure out equivalent resistance. What do you think that you know, final connection is? Once I figure out the current, how would I use that to figure out equivalent resistance? OK, so I know the current and voltage. How does that relate to the equivalent resistance? Yeah, you relate it through Ohm's law. 
So, so you know, whatever the single register there is, it must be consistent with um, this expression here. What color do I want to use? Red. Um, so it must be consistent with this expression that equivalent resistance is equal to uh, whatever voltage I applied divided by the current that's passing through. And the theorem that Thevenin that proved is that I think uh, what he proved is that as long as your circuit consists only of registers, then no matter how complicated this is, that you can reduce it down to this. That uh, there's one more part to, to this the to that theorem, but we'll go into that later. Um, so yeah, so we are going to try to find out current, and once we do that, we'll put it in here, and um, we'll try to express this equivalent resistance in terms of these resistances alone. So, so. Um, so let's do the simple one first. Um, do you see any junctions here? No junctions, right? OK, so that means as I try to apply Kirchhoff's rules, I can forget about applying the junction rule, because there's no junction to use it on. And I'll just use the loop rule. Right? So what I'm going to say is when I go through this circuit in a loop, all the changes of voltage must add up to 0. All right, that seems simple enough. So I, I need to define the loop first. I mean, there's only one loop. But let me just be more careful in t saying what that loop looks like. Um, let me start from this point here. It looks like a good starting point. And starting from here, I'm going to go across the battery, keep going, go across the register, across the second register, and then come back, return to the same point. So let me write that down. Let me write down the loop rule with all those changes of voltage. So uh, loop rule says that change of voltage added up all around the loop. Well, as I go across the battery, uh, what's my change in voltage? So plus V0 or minus V0? Does the voltage go up? or go down as I go across this battery. Up, right? I'm going from negative to positive terminal. So it's a plus. Oops. V not. All right. I have to keep going. Now, as I go across this register, um, do you, so I know it's going to be given by Ohm's law, but the question I'm asking would be, is it up or down? Down. The voltage will drop as you go over a register. Yeah, because um, the electrons, the, you know, the charges would lose energy, and it comes, yeah, OK. So minus uh, the current, there's a symbol I assigned to it, so I'll use that. Minus current times the resistance. And for the second register, it would be the same thing, except with the resistance of the second register. So minus IR2. And then I come back to the same point. So the loop rule says that this must add up to 0. So this is your system of one equation that you're trying to solve for. How many unknowns do you have? Two. Wait, what are you counting as unknowns? Is V not unknown? No. Is I unknown? I current? It is unknown, right? I don't know the current. It's not given. Um, oh, I see. You guys are treating the resistances as unknown? Resistances has to be given, oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, yeah. So you have to assume that resistances are given. Yeah. And, and, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if the, both resistances were not given, then there would be no way to solve this. You can go from here to here, but there's no way to go back, way backward. So here, the only unknown is the current. The current is unknown. And th you know, this is what I mean. Usually, the situation is that voltage and the resistances are specified. Because in a real physical situation, that's usually the case. Um, so you know, one unknown, um, one equation, I can solve it. Let me solve it for current i. I mean, it's not that. Um, let me skip all the algebra steps. And let me have you stare at it for a while and tell me if uh, it looks reasonable. Does this sound right? Okay, yeah. So to do that, what you would have to do is move this to the other side, 
factor out i, so you get r1 plus r2 divided out, then you get this. Okay, okay so now that I have the current, I can use this formula here. According to the formula that we guessed the, before we did all of this, the equivalent resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current, V0 divided by R1 plus R2. Well, the voltage is canceled, and you end up with, it's one over, one over this, so let me just uh, you know, flip it back around, R1 plus R2. This is what you would have guessed. And this is, um, that's what you would have guessed. And um, that's what applying Kirchhoff's Kier 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 rule says. Good. Yeah, so maybe this is not all that impressive. Like, we just took the long way to get something that you already knew. Uh, 